Hello and welcome to today's session about standards and mobility as a service, also called MASS. Today uh, we will look into what exists in regards to MASS and standards and also how you can adapt to what exists to your needs. But before we start, bonjour. Hola, I'm Tuto, the Director of Partnership and Events at Mobility Data. I'm currently located in Paris, France, with a background in industrial engineering and project management. I do believe that we are here to leverage technology to support our community inclusion and not the other way around. You have on the slide my contact details. So after this session, if you have any question, feel free to reach out. Today, what we will be looking at, standardize, why and how, but we will also discover together some of the most used standards and specifications that exist today. Then we will have a talk about data quality, how to share your data, and we will end this session with a use case of the GTFS, uh, which is a specification in low to middle income countries. So. Standardize, why and how? That's probably the two biggest questions I'm always getting asked. Why standardize? What's in it for me or here for you, people who are listening? Well, first, whenever you standardize, regardless of the industry, it facilitates data exchange and sharing. Very much as today, I'm delivering these information to you in English because we have agreed that it's easier for you to follow. Then, whenever there is a standard, it helps reduce the cost of development and scaling up. You can use the same system in a lot of different parts of the world, but you can also develop your own business based on that uh, to reach new markets, so the international markets. And also, it helps you focus on doing your own solution, uh, finding your own innovation to meet multiple and different needs without having to scratch your head every time you want to reach a new market. Then, last but not least, a standard will always come with a community. So, a lot of people who are using it in one capacity or the other, and you can lean on them for their expertise. You can go to them and ask them questions when you have problems to be solved. And also, you can go through the different best practices that they have. Now, how to standardize? That is a step a list of steps that you can use for things that are way bigger than mobility services. First, define your use case. That's the one key uh, step for any person working in the technology world or developing a product. What are the problems that you are trying to solve? Then, based on this definition, start exploring what exists, the different standards, the different specification, the different solutions. Uh, read a little bit about them. And then based on that, choose the one that is the most suitable to your problem, to your use case. It can be more than one standard or specification depending on the complexity level of your use case. Then once your choice is made, go deeper in their documentation. They will have a lot of definitions, a lot of new concepts that you'll have to get around and to get a better understanding of. And I'm pretty sure that by then you will have questions. So reach out to their community to answer those questions. And when you feel comfortable enough, start using the chosen standards and specification and maybe we'll take back to reaching out to the community for further details on implementation that is okay that's a positive feedback loop now that you, uh, we have discussed a little bit why it is so important to standardize the information we share let's have a little talk about the different standards that are out there the most used for mobility services. So first, this is a survey made by the French Fabrique des Mobilités uh, earlier this year, where they went through a 
uh, the most global lens as possible for mobility services and we're trying to identify what are the existing specification and standards that exist they come up with this list and you can see there are a lot of choices and all of them are very specific to define use cases that would be uh, the text in white on blue or purple boxes as you can see some are the description of the transport services and some go even further it, uh, for ticketing or electronic payment. Today, and because that's probably one of my forte, we will focus on the description of transit transport information. Why? Because it's when you describe a service, then you can start thinking of the other use cases, how these services are being used, how you can do booking and payment, and how you can do all the different levels of mass integration. First, the one and only reference data model that is a standard trends model. What it is, it's an abstract model of common public transport concept and data structure. What it means is it's as if you had a gigantic, uh, very comprehensive dictionary with all the concepts that you need to know when you're talking about transportation. The steward is the European standardization body, SEN, and it's dedicated for public transportation, including also on-demand and flexible services and shared mobility, carpooling, bike sharing, scooter sharing, free floating or not, and also taxis. What you must remember on trends model is this is the only reference model. It's comprehensive, so it is sound for future evolution of mobility services, and it is used by all of us as a reference. It's a little bit like, as I said before, the best dictionary you have out there. Based on trends model, a global ecosystem of standards have been created and you can see how this model is a reference because it's robust. It gave birth to several standards, including NITEX and Siri that I will be the one uh, uh, describing today. But you can explore all the others uh, later on at your own pace. So, and before we dive into Netex and Siri, this is the content of Trends Model. As I said, it has everything you need. And what you will see is in each part of the content of Trends Model, you have the data format that it gave birth to. So here, Netex and Siri. Netex, what is it? It's the European norm for static information. You will have a way to describe the topology of the network. You will have a way to describe timetables or schedule if you prefer. You will also have information about fares and pricing, but you will also and most importantly have passenger information, the thing that you want to describe to all of the users. NetEx goes hand in hand with Siri, which is the European norm for dynamic information. Dynamic is also the way you refer to real-time information. With Siri, you can provide real-time departure from stop, very useful, to provide the next one, which will be real-time progress information. Where is the bus on the map? I think we all got used to that view now. It will also help with Siri uh, to manage the movement of buses between different areas. It also manage the synchronization of guaranteed connection if the train is late, does the bus wait for me or not? Uh, for example, in uh, Switzerland, you would have that system in uh, sub area, uh, uh, suburban areas. Siri also allowed to exchange plan and real-time timetable updates. So for example, if uh, the Metro uh, departed late from the previous stop, what is the impact on the upcoming timetable? So will uh, every single stop be hit with a minute uh, of it being late or will in between two stops go faster and so on? You can also distribute status messages with Siri. So for example, if there is a suspension of service and you can also do performance information based on the comparison of what was planned and what was executed. Another type of ecosystem 
the GXFS ecosystem. That is this one dedicated to passenger information. So trip planning. So if uh, you remember what was included in Transmodal, the GFS, GXFS ecosystem is a smaller part of it. It's slightly different because it came from the industry. So all the, the different trip planning application, the mobility operators, uh, the third parties, the data producers came together and thought of a format that would be dedicated to trip planning. And they drafted specification, they started using it. They also drafted a governance by them, so by the entire open source community behind the ecosystem. And of course, uh, they chose people to be the facilitator of the community. This entire ecosystem uh, gave birth to two specifications, the general transit feed specification, also called GTFS, and the general bike share feed specification, also called GBFS. Let's look into GTFS. GTFS also has a static part that is called GTFS schedule, very similar to what we had with NetEx. It covers six core areas that are stops, routes, agencies, calendar or schedule, trips, and stop times. GTFS schedule throughout the years has been extended and is still being extended to represent more passenger information. So now you can represent the different shape of the route, continue stop, which means that uh, a bus can be flagged anywhere in its route and it will stop and pick up or drop passengers, transfers between different modes, for example, Pathways is the station accessible, for example, with people with wheelchair or traveling with strollers, etc. Pathway routing. So do you have an elevator or an escalator? How long do you need to walk toward the nearest exit? For example, station entrance, if you have multiple entrances for the same station. Boarding areas, that is something uh, a lot of you might be familiar when taking a long distance train uh, to catch, to be in front of the right carriage to catch. Translation, useful for any country that has several um, national languages or uh, welcome a lot of different tourists. Stop text to speech that you start seeing and hearing uh, more and more on buses when there is a very nice voice reading for you the name of the stop and vehicle description. For example, if you can take the bike or not with you on the train. GTFS schedule goes hand in hand with GTFS real time. As its name is pretty clear, uh, it is for dynamic information and it has four main use cases trip updates, localization of vehicle, service change, and service alert. It is very close to Siri uh, from the Transmodal ecosystem. Now, for shared mobility, you have GBFS that has six core areas, the description of the system, the station, they can be virtual or physical, the different vehicles, a scooter, a bike, uh, travel rules, pricing, and alert on the system. GBFS covers four types of modes, bikes, scooters, moped, and car sharing. And of course, regardless uh, if they are human propuls, fuel propuls, or electric. Now that you have been given an overview of data standards you and specification, you will be able to pick one or several that will fit your need. But Standardizing data is not enough. You also need to make sure that the data is of high quality. Why? First, it facilitates your work on a daily basis, because if the data is consistent and of high quality, it also means that you can share the load with some of your colleagues, some suppliers, third party entities. It also reduces the cost of data production, for example, in the very specific use case of a shared mobility operator who is working with a trip planning application for integration, the fact that the data is of high quality from the get-go will prevent a lot of emails back and forth about, oh, what did you mean by this and that? And is this in minute or in second? Is that the right color? And so on. So all of that 
um, it makes you reduce the cost of data production. It also reduces the cost of customer support. Uh, for example, if you make sure that the bus line is encoded in the right color or that the bus stop has the right name in the data you represent, then the user is slightly less confused when it comes to taking the right bus to go exactly where they need to go. And it reduces the cost of performance control because then you can actually compare apple to apple, orange to orange. Data quality overall also improves user experience. I said before, uh, it reduced anxiety when it comes to taking public transit. It also increased trust because then you know that people spent time in designing the mobility services, but also in describing them. It improved your operation choices in the sense that with data that is of high quality, you make better decisions that are based on things that can be verified and double checked uh, and you can also run analytics to better define policies what are for example the trends of the day of the different users and so on how now to improve data quality well same as for how you choose your standard or your specification always start by defining precisely what you want. And here, more than what problem you're trying to solve is what do I want represented in data? Then you can go and explore the different tools, the different solutions that exist out there to choose the most suitable one for you. Then what we advise you is to include those tools in your data pipeline to make sure that you always have data quality check throughout the process of producing data. Then you can reach out to the community who created the tools, same as for specification and standards to ask them questions to see what are the best practices and one step further with data quality, what is nice, you can always give feedback on a tool. So you can also shape the tool improvement to fit your needs and your experience so that it can benefit the entire community. Now, I will give you an example of an open source tool that is used for data quality in the world of public transit. It's the canonical GTFS schedule validator. What are the, its characteristic, it's free to use and to reproduce. So it is also open source. The code is available for all to improve, comment on, contribute. It's canonical because it's totally on par with the GTFS specification and extension that I showed earlier. And it's expandable. Every time there is a new extension, the validator changes to make sure that it stays uh, in, um, that it keeps parity and uh, that people can use it. It exists in GitHub, as I said, again, open source, but also as a desktop app, if you want to include it in your data pipeline that way. It is today used by tree planning application, government entities, transit providers, and third parties, which would be the data producers or the people improving the data for public transit agencies. What is the GTFS schedule validator checking? It's checking if there is any feed information missing, so admin information, for example, who to call to make a booking. Uh, it's obviously also checking the basic information if there is something missing, like the time uh, table of a specific uh, route. It is also checking on scheduling problem. So if the integration is not smooth with a trip planning application, it will identify if you have a format issue, so it can't be read by a machine, meaning that it, it is not mm -hmm. uh, efficient for uh, an integration. Quality issues in general, uh, if it will impact the user or the rider experience, and if the data looks a little bit suspicious. So for example, if the time between two bus stops is well mentioned, is well represented, but somehow it looks a little bit weird because it would mean that your bus is going at 150 km an hour, which is probably not real. So now that you have chosen 
the specification or the standard uh, to use to represent the data. Now that you have made sure that your data is of high quality, how can you share this data? Well, let's see first why you should share the data. First, you should share your data to make sure that it's discoverable. That's what you want for your services, to make sure that people can actually find them. And by sharing the data, you can reduce the cost of outreach to travelers. For example, it will appear in their favorite trip planning application. So you might gain new users or actually tourists who are occasional travelers. Uh, and it also reduced the cost of integration with other parties because you can't know everyone that is planning on building a trip planning application. So having one place where your data is shared with will reduce the cost of that integration. Overall, same as for data quality, it improved the user experience in the sense that a lot of users, you and I, our friends and family included, are a little bit lazy. We like having one app in our phone. So uh, whenever the data is represented there, we love it. Uh, it also improves your global position in the ecosystem. It really proves that uh, you care about sharing your data, sharing your services. And in a lot of cases. It is also how you get compliant with local regulation mandating, for example, the opening of data for public transit services or shared mobility or any mobility services as we have seen in Europe. Now, how do you share your data? Same as before, let's look at the different steps. First, and this one is new, explore the, recall, the local regulation you need to comply with. As I said, in some parts of the world, so for example, the European Union, there are very strict regulation forcing you to make sure that your mobility services can be discovered by the users by sharing your data publicly. Based on what are your legal obligation, then you can define your overall data sharing needs and the way to license it. Some regulation, for example, the French uh, law on mobility services is very strict on what kind of license you can use to share your data. Then based on all that, you can start exploring the different existing sharing platform. Is there one in your region? Is there one in your country? Is there one bigger than that? Uh, and choose the most suitable ones for, uh, for you. It can be one or several. <laughs> And then you can, again, reach out to their community. Every single platform will have one community. And based on that, you can start sharing your data. And if you have any question, again, as before, always reach out to the different community that they have. This is an example of an open community database. It is the mobility database. It is collaborative. There are over 60 countries represented. It's consumed by 10 trip planning app, meaning that they will regularly check the database to make sure that all of the data exists and is represented in their solution. And it contains over 1800 data sets. It represents data in GTFS schedule and GTFS real time. And that database exists in GitHub, but also as a CSV to download so it can be easily passed by a machine. Today, the different uh, data sets are all on this map. So you see it's getting wider in coverage. Now, let's look a little bit into the very specific use case of low to middle income countries and the usage of one of the specifications that exist out there for public transit, which is GTFS. And for that, I would like to show you, you some slides about a project that is very dear to my heart and that is supporting the African continent in its digital transformation of mobility services. It is the network DT4A, also called Digital Transport for Africa, and it regroups a very large and diverse network of organizations, for-profit and non-profit, who are committed to building digital commons and uh, to applying the digital principles of development to the goals of sustainable urban mobility and access. What they have all done coming together is pledge to advance safe, 
affordable, accessible and sustainable urban transport system for all, adapted to the unique transportation landscape of urban Africa. They also have pledged to actively support user-centered design, collaboration, open standards, open data, open source, and open innovation, while making sure that privacy and security levels are at the highest standard possible. This is also very important. And finally, they have pledged to follow the definition in the Open Data Handbook, where open data is defined as a data that can be freely used, reused, and redistributed by anyone. So what does this project do? Well, first, they started by mapping transit network on the African continent using the format GTFS. So you can see on the left uh, a map of the different uh, transit networks that have been mapped so far. But they go even beyond that. They go beyond mapping in providing tech application and tool development services. They also do capacity building, making sure that people on the ground are given the right knowledge to keep on maintaining the data because once you map, it's not enough. You need to make sure, as I said before, it's of high quality, it's accurate, and it can be searched. And they also support research and analysis uh, to make sure that they can come up with better policy making, as I referred to previously talking about quality, and especially like, for example, are my uh, transit stops accessible for all? How long does it take for people to walk to them and so on? That is the end of my presentation. I know there were a lot of information in less than 30 minutes since it's the format that we were given. So you will see in the next two slides that will be shared with you uh, links to go further about standards and specifications that were briefly presented, but also about data quality and how to share, which is referred to also as the data ecosystem. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. And again, if you have any question, feel free to reach out. Thank you.